Well, this time, carrying on with the Norfolk theme, I'm going to use these photographs to paint this rather beautiful sunset. But I'm also adding into it this picture of the uh, yacht just up into here in the right hand side to give an idea of scale and to give more of the feeling of this tranquility and uh, human and quiet habitation at the spiritual side of it. Um, obviously it means a lot to me because I know the scene from many many years past in my childhood and uh, I know the ambience of it would like to try and capture that. This time I'm going to use acrylics it would be nice in oils as well because oils would blend more easily but I, I want to try this one in acrylics and I'm painting onto a white piece of board which has been primed with white emulsion very textural because I use the brush strokes each way but a heavy brush to give it almost a canvas feel I use a set of acrylics, my homemade stay wet palette in this case as I said before we just use an ordinary sandwich box and I can even use one for mixing as well placing into that some paper towel in the bottom and a piece of grease proof on the top putting water in and when that lid is closed those paints will stay nice and wet forever and next to it I've got a multi well mixing palette and some water and then of course my brushes Let's go into the brushes now and see what we're going to use. And the brushes I'm going to use this time are almost entirely, except for just a couple of small ones later, these SAA uh, acrylic and oil filberts. And until now I've been using most of these specialist crafts ones, which are very nice. Um, but I thought I'd give the SAA ones a trial and see how they compared. I'll also let my students try them as well, so we'll see how they think of them too. The nice thing about the filberts, of course, is you've got the rounded edge, flat one way to do finer work and then rounded, which gives you lots of control, especially on things like portraits where you don't really want hard, flat edges. And to finish off, I'll just need a small pointed round brush for the master and details. Maybe doing a little bit of leaf work on this, in which case I might use a little bit of the uh, sponges. So let's see how we do with these brushes then. Most of this painting I'll be using this larger brush, in this case it's a size 16, nice chunky brush and painted fairly loosely. One of the problems I'm going to have with acrylics is blending, so I'll have to try and blend most of the scene as I go along. It's best to start with the mid-tones and lighter colours, so I'm going to work in these lighter bits of sky behind and gradually bring up the darker colours on top, blending as I go along. With oils I'd be doing both at the same time, a bit here and a bit here, but I don't want these paints to dry off on me. That may happen a little bit, but I want to start off with the uh, sky and work my way downwards to the horizon here. And that first colour is a beautiful light turquoise, so I'm going to take a little bit of my, my turquoise and add white to it in this case because I'm going to want quite a bit of it. Normally I advise to put the white first and then add the pigment, the colour to it, uh, because that way you don't mix too much. This way you, it's very tempting to mix too much, but I'm going to need quite a lot of this colour. And Actually it's a very light um, colour, so I'm going to take a bit more across to there and add a touch of yellow to it to make it even more yellow, slightly more yellow because it's a lovely sunset. You notice also in the printing of these photographs, one is on matte paper and one is on the gloss, there's a big difference between the papers. That's something to watch out for when you're printing as well, as to which one you actually want to use. I'm going to start off with the top one and work my way through to the darker one. So I want this slightly yellowy colour first. To bit more of that yellow into there. Let's just test that. Now it's not light enough. It's been very, very light this at first. Light blue. Comes up through here. There we are. That's more the colour now. And I'm painting onto a whiteboard as I was saying before. And this will also mean that it will appear that the paint is too dark that the paint is too strong at first. But as I go on, 
In fact, you'll see that it's not. Right through under here, up through the cloud edges, using the brush sideways on. Again, it's a rapid technique. Um, it's slightly impressionist. I'm not using broken colour yet, but just slightly in the fact that uh, I'm going to be using one colour over another, letting one colour show through another. Right through underneath the clouds here to paint through our drawing a bit because um, we don't want to leave behind a halo, we don't want to leave behind um, areas of white around another colour that's going to come on later. Going a fraction darker down here, a fraction more colour, and do it with that uh, turquoise. Just blending it down and through. Now, as I say, the, the board is slightly absorbent, so it's, it's taking the painting quite quickly. Well, actually, dry it a little bit quicker than I would like in some ways. Not to worry. Right down through here. I'm just leaving some darker areas so I know where I am. And then it becomes more yellow as it comes down. A little bit more yellow into that. Using a I'm not using a lemon yellow at all, I'm using a, a, a cadmium yellow here. There we go. That blends down and then through here. And it looks too strong at the moment, but once we've uh, actually established it all, it won't be. Gently mixing up these colours, right up through here, and then that colour comes out to there. Almost cerulean turquoise coming through here. I would be using cerulean if I didn't have the turquoise, and cerulean would do this job just alright. As I come up here, it gets stronger, and I'm going to now take some of the cerulean blue. You'll see the difference in it now a lot warmer. It's going to need some white. It still seems maybe a bit dark to you because we're painting against the white but when we get the other colours in it won't be so dark and the point is that that will allow us to have any more lighter colours glowing later on. We've always got to leave ourselves with um, the option to go a bit lighter still if we need to. Get rid of all of that light board for the minute and then I'm going to put more light colours back on, put the cream back on again and so on. Up here is a bit of light. Now let's paint that on. Who needs to get rid of that? Now at the moment these brushes are giving me plenty of body. The thing I have noticed straight away about these SAA brushes is they're nice and heavy. Uh, they're not too stiff. They're not taking the paint off and they're not too soft for taking the paint and placing it where I want it. On board it's not so bad, but on canvas you do knock the head out of brushes because it does tend to, if you're painting like this, it does to, tend to act like sandpaper on them and it does um, really push them. So this brush, you don't want it too soft that it won't put the paint on, you don't want it too hard that it starts to lift it off. So I'm able to put glazes on with this as you can see quite quickly as well as um, as well as put heavier paint on. Let's go back in again. A lot of a very light, very very light here again. I'm just going to come back in with a bit more white and that turquoise, and just give it a second coat. I do find it's annoying with the acrylics, but I do find they sink a bit. I do want some purer colour going on in here, so I'm going to crisscross my brush strokes across here now. Just bring a little of this. Very light, that warmer blue above. Back to that warmer blue. Adding on these layers. This is going to be a painting very much in layers. Layering one colour up over another. Now we go more grey blue. To take a little bit of cobalt and ultramarine. And just start to come down to here with that.
more water with it because I'm using it as a glaze as well. And into that I should place a little ink, a little magenta. I give a slightly pinker tint here at the bottom. I need to let that dry in a moment because it's starting to lift off the existing colour if I don't. Right the way along, way down to here. Your brush strokes feel the shape of these clouds. Don't, um, don't just paint one direction all the time. That really wouldn't work. Right, I'm going to put the camera onto high speed now, giving you the basics of how this works. I'll just stop and slow down occasionally when I've got something important to discuss with you about change of colour. This way you'll be able to see the entire painting done um, rather than just little sections of it. But you'll be able to see it in a matter of minutes. Now for this darker grey, this very deep blue grey, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to my colour. To really give me a nice dark, warm grey shining through here. To play between the warm and the cool with this grey, so I'm going to add more brown to it as I as I need. So often in a case with a painting, it isn't just one colour. We have to use one colour against another to make something like this work.
start laying in some colour down here now whilst this dries off a bit because I'm going to put some lighter colour over there. Um, and obviously I want to be making up a similar colour to the one I've been using before with the um, turquoise because I've got to reflect the same colours down in the water that were up in the sky. Maybe a fraction down. Very often with water we'll notice that the colour is either slightly darker or slightly lighter. I can't really work out the reasoning for that, but um, it's never usually the same. Anyway, let's put it that way. Water, you'll see me doing a lot more vertical strokes as well as the basis to blend this in and gradually work up these reflections. Move down a brush size. We've got our two brushes. Turn them with that same colour, a bit of Prussian blue and burnt sienna and burnt umber. Middle of your warm background on here. Pretty straight line across here. Brought this line downwards a bit here so that it comes out towards us. On this edge. It's in fact, about halfway here, that bit of land does appear to just crop into here a little bit. And we've established our basic tones. I've really got to work in these picks up to here and so on. 
and build over and over again. So I'm just taking a break. Yeah, this paint is, is now dry, it doesn't take long to dry, and uh, I'm going to continue working with a large brush again to try and mix up and build up these lighter colours. I'm still building up the, the pinks now. I'm going to go back to my white. A little touch of the pink. A little bit of the yellow. And we're going to be doing a bit more glazing with it because I've got to link these colours together. So I'm going to be using just a little bit more water with it. And I've got to look at the highlights in this now. Paper, the way that the water just comes through there. still gradually working up the lights and darks. So what I'm going to do now is take a little white and some lemon yellow this time, just a little touch of lemon yellow which is even lighter. Just to make it a little yellower underneath here. And that will work against these more creamy pinks. Now, see the difference in that? It's, uh, it's a little bit more yellow and it's just giving a bit more of a glow which makes the other pink seem pinker. So we don't always have to make changes to the actual colour themselves. We can make changes to a colour next to something and that will totally change the look of the whole work. So we're putting this cooler cream in which is then making the warmer creams appear warmer. So it's a matter of comparison, if you like, a little bit, isn't it?
Right, well the bulk of the painting has now been done and I want to start working up just a few more of the lights um, before I start to work in the final textures and these nice posts are going to go into here and of course I want to paint the boat over there which is a very important part. So I'm just going to work mainly now with the smaller of the two uh, filberts and this time I'm going to take a little bit of white to finish off and a tiny touch of the warmer yellow ochre and I do mean a tiny touch just to give it that little sense of yellowness that warm yellow that I want to be into here just a little bit because I want to play this slightly warmer yellow a little more against the lemon yellow and the um, orange that I've already put into here you can see now the difference that it's, it's giving me and these are vertical marks I want to get the shininess of the water into it so horizontals and verticals coming into here little marks, little more water, and that's a touch of water, not too much. That's the pink going on up there, just a bit lighter down here. And I think that about does the basics for the shiny water. Now let's come across to the boat. Now for that boat, I've got my larger picture to work from too, but uh, I might have to use a little pointy brush now. So I'm going to go down to now sort of round and first of all I just want to mark it out so I'm going to take some Prussian blue and a little touch of burnt sienna just get my darks worked out here again and the bow of the boat wants to be about here no pun intended right up to the edge of the woodland Back here, it comes up, actually that cabin comes up into the woodland there, and it comes down about here, back to the stern, a nice curve to it. Pull it in a minute again, just to work out where it's going. And look around the stern. Nice curve to the boat, up course there. So by taking my deep blue and some brown I can make a, a dark. And I can make that dark warm or cool as I like. Go back and lighten that in just a moment. Just a small curve on the back basic shape. Right back into that and I want a nice pink to start with. So I'm going to make a tiny touch of white, a little touch of my pink. And we'll come back in there and we'll make that side of that boat pink catching the sunlight. And I'm going to go cool up into there, I want it to be cooler, just to get it started. If I do that there, then it has to be reflecting down below a bit, so we're going to have a, a line of pink happening down here as well. That's where we start to play with getting the highlights in the water right too, as the light shines across the water. Here and there. Take a fresh of the darker colour. Just use a tiny glaze of it to come back behind the boat here. Give a feeling of. Now let's start to draw that a little bit more clearly. Now I need a cool. Going along the bow of the boat, take some of my cerulean, a little touch of the cobalt, I'll just come back in here. Yeah. The 
cool that boat down a bit. And got that. Now that yellow I made earlier with the yellow ochre. A little bit of that shining across here. There's more than one colour going on as you can see. So we're just catching the side of the boat like that. And then that starts to catch the little figures and back of the cabin here. I'll just add a little touch of red here. Right, next will be the mast. What? Just to indicate that that mast is coming in front of the cabin here. And then that mast should be about here. So. Coming down here, I have to be careful now to try and get a quite nice vertical line coming in a moment. The mast. And now I've got to go back to my dark again. Add a little bit more blue to it again. And carefully come down here. I'm going to break the line just slightly to make it look as if it's rippling in the water. Now the mast should be a bit longer than the boat, so if I do this, if I do that, um, the mast should be always about one and a quarter. So that mast is going to be much bigger than we think. One and a quarter is about there. That mast has got to come right down from here to meet there. If I make the brush into a slight blade, I need to bring down a little bit of a line for the jib forestay. We need to put a line down here for the forestay. And we've got then the halyards back here. Just being indicated in. And that's by using my pointy brush, resting my finger on the board and turning the brush into a blade. My basics from the smaller photograph, I've got the larger photograph. So I know that that um, mask, for instance, needs to... Now I've got to start putting in some reflections this way as well. Actually, what I have noticed is that those trees are reflecting here. Now it's got the larger picture. We've got the trees that are up here just reflecting over that darker water there. I don't have a, a thin SAA brush to play with to show you, but uh, I think you know we, we, we've got the quality, we've got the feel of the quality of these SAA brushes now. They are nice. Equally the ones that I'm holding now are very good value, but they may not be quite as robust and last as long as the SAA ones will. So it's horses for courses. Here I want to just bring in, make this a bit more twiggy. If I do that there, then I need to be making the same down in the reflections below here. And the same also goes for the, the background there, where I've been making this very light pink that I want. We need to just break into these trees a bit in the background here, just to show that the light is coming through them. And having said that also, the, the jib on the boat being furled up and left there. The line on the top of the cabin, I want to get a bit clearer. On here. Take a little bit of that blue. We can just see the sail, especially on the larger picture, which has been had a cover over it. A boom here, coming down to there, has a cover. I don't want that too bright. I may have to just do a little glaze over that pink just to soften it just a bit, I think. Having got that, I need to come back with a bit of blue underneath. 
underneath as well. And now the portholes just showing, the windows just showing here in the light a little. Just like a bit of that blue as well and put it underneath the boat here. These little subtle colours just at the end that can help to make the picture. And we'll lead the eye in with a bit of light coming through there. We'll lead the eye into the picture from the right there. Just a little bit of cadmium orange. Just drop that in here. Right, so now I'm ready to move on back to the larger areas again. Okay, we've done the yacht, nice and dry. Now we want to come down to these posts in the, in the uh, edge of the water here. And I'm going back to my medium brush. My paints are staying nice and wet, this homemade stay wet palette. I'm really going to want to go quite dark here, so I'm going to take again my Prussian blue and some burnt sienna. And I want it to be fairly warm this time, so a little touch of burnt umber as well. more of the blue to go dark enough. Now because I've gone that fraction warmer than the dark in the rest of the picture, this dark should come to the foreground a bit more. So let's just try that out. There should be a, a nice big block of wood here. I'll just put it in. It's going to be reflecting. So if it comes down to here it's going to reflect in. Next one up is about here. Whatever comes above must come below because of the reflection, so you can do the same thing. You see how these stand up so nicely. Make sure that they're the same angle as each other. You know that that one's about there, and behind it some bits of wood stuck into the water and reflecting below. That seems to be the case. Up here there's another one. It's about part way there. Could be little marks just where the join is. Just give that little bit of three dimension. To these old posts, possibly parts of an old boat in this case. Now, using the brush tip, let's just start to flick in some of these. Made a bit wetter, so it's a bit more pointed. Flatten my brush out a little bit. See if I can just start to flick in some of these bits of grasses and things here. At the edges. I'm going to need my small brush for this in a minute, really, but I'll just start off with this one. We find ways of painting things that look quite difficult with easier techniques. So I'll carry on down putting textures in, just crisscrossing little marks of this dark. Right, now I'm going to go down to my little brushes again. We want to start giving the feeling of these Norfolk reeds which are coming up through here. So if I flick upwards and outwards, I start to get the feeling of rushes and reeds. Talking of that, we need to come down here as well. If you want to paint thin lines and you want, want to paint too thick, too thin and it's transparent, too thick, you can't paint a thin mark. So you've got to get the consistency of your paint just right as well. Now, on the surface of the water also, I've got little brushes and reeds just coming through here and there, and they help to give us surface, shiny surface of the water as well. They're quite important on these little marks. This is where we start dotting the I's and crossing the T's. At this stage, not earlier on, do all the loose work first and then the tight, heavy and the detailed work at the end. Right, 
that's the next stage of the down details done. Well, the next part is to take the fine brush still and work some of the reverse. We take some of the lighter colours, some of the blue greys that we were making earlier, and we start to bring those down backwards in amongst the grasses here. We just start to highlight some of the rushes and reeds as well as breaking in here at the edges. A little cadmium orange now and some white and some pink. Going back to the sort of colours we're having from the sunrise. Rough against smooth, cool against warm. We're playing all of these tricks against each other. So it's not green rushes or brown trees or blue sky or we've got light reflecting. This is what I said about white. There's hardly ever white, there's hardly ever black because a colour will be reflecting somewhere that will turn it or tint it. Artificial light or daylight or these things will affect other colours around them and reflect off them, leaves or whatever. And thus we get this texture effect here. Now I've got to stand back and have a look because I have to decide whether I want to do actually any more, whether it does need any more rushes and reeds anywhere. Well, the next part is to take the fine brush still and work some of the reverse. We take some of the lighter colours, some of our blue greys that we were making earlier, and we start to bring those down backwards in amongst the grasses here. A little bit of white just to get the colours going. So that's our burnt sienna and whichever blues we require for that particular grey, whether it be the ultramarine or cobalt or whatever. We just start to highlight some of the brushes and reeds as well as breaking in here at the edges, we can just make these up as we go along. Some of them are crisscrossing, some of them are slightly curvy, some of them are like bamboo leaves because bamboo is only a grass and reeds are of the same family, the grass family. A little cadmium orange now and some white and some pink. Go back to the what the colours we're having from the sunrise. Rough against smooth, cool against warm. We're playing all of these tricks against each other. So it's not green rushes or brown trees or blue sky or we've got light reflecting. This is what I said about white. There's hardly ever white, there's hardly ever black because a colour will be reflecting somewhere that will turn it or tint it artificial light or daylight or these things will affect other colours around them and reflect off them, leaves or whatever. And thus we get this texture effect here. Now I've got to stand back and have a look because I have to decide whether I want to do actually any more, whether it does need any more rushes and reeds anywhere or whether this is where I leave it, whether I want a few little bits of light coming in here and there from other little bits of rush or... Well, I just haven't had a look now and actually I think um, all we really need is a little bit of very, very fine work. I go right down my brushes. I could do it with this one, but I want to go to a, a finer brush. Because what I want to do is bring ripples in here of the light into the dark and the dark into the light. So I'm just going to Make that very, very thin paint and we'll see if we can just ripple the edges of these a little. Get the feeling of these darks going into the lights and the lights coming into the darks. There's ever such small ripples on the, on the water. It's just a few lines that I want to give that feeling. I'll do the other way around in a moment. I'm going to put some lights going into the darks. Now then, as I was saying, the other way around. See if we can find some of these lighter pinks we made. And actually, it's so calm. There's very little in the way of 
things going on. And we're nearly there, you know. As it happened, because I've got the brushwork, the underpainting already showing a little bit of these lines because they're picking up on the brushwork. I would say for that particular painting, which isn't an easy one to do because it is so chocolate boxy, we're about there.